I'm Ann Carpenter. I'm Kevin Alceri. iBiology really strives to teach about fundamental principles of biology and the tools they use. And one really fundamental part of that series is imaging. And in imaging, it's very important to understand how your images are analyzed. And we, along with many other collaborators in this video series, wanted to make a video about image analysis. We wanted this to be so that you could understand how your images are analyzed, what are the best practices, and how to get the most out of your data. And as far as background, this is meant for students of all levels. We want this to be a video for people that are already doing microscopy image analysis, people that maybe want to learn about it from other fields, or even if you're just curious how images came to be, we hope this video will be relevant to you. If you use microscopy these days, it's quite likely you're going to need to quantify images at some point. In the past few years, we've seen some amazing new types of microscopy. They've offered a window into biological processes we've never seen before. You can learn more about those through iBiology's microscopy video series. But you can also think of image analysis software as another new kind of window into biological processes. They allow us to observe phenomena that are either too subtle for the human eye to recognize or too tedious to track in large-scale, high-throughput experiments or long time-lapse movies. In this video series, you're going to see the full life cycle of an image in a biological experiment, all the way from image acquisition, storage and sharing, all the way to visualization and bioimage analysis. We try to balance the right amount of fundamentals with practical tips to get you started. The videos aim to entice you to learn more, and even better, download software tools and give bioimage analysis a try yourself.